This video was made possible by NordVPN. At just 269, protect your family and friends online with my link in the description below, giving you an exclusive 70% off a monthly plan. It was the 10th of October 1942, a dark and thunderous sky. At the altitude of 36,000 feet, Wing Commander Nichols John Hamilton of 601 Squadron was patrolling the skies in his Supermarine Spitfire. Suddenly, a pair of German BF 109s appear out of the thick clouds. They immediately spot Hamilton's Spitfire and begin to tail him, but the visibility was poor. Hamilton was an ace pilot and begins to perform evasive maneuvers, sweeping in and out of the clouds with his highly maneuverable Spitfire. The BF 109s attempted to keep up with him, but the Spitfire was a far superior plane when it came to turning. Hamilton was impressed with the skill of the two 109 pilots, as they were keeping up with him surprisingly well. But it wasn't enough. Realising that the Spitfire was too hard to keep up with in the turn, the 109 split up to increase their chances of shooting Hamilton down. Hamilton would momentarily see the 109s behind him, but as soon as he did, he would pull hard and lose them again. There was nothing the 109s could do to maintain distance for a clear shot behind him in the heavy clouds. By now several minutes had gone by and Hamilton begins to realise that he could no longer see the 109s behind him. Another advantage the Spitfire had over the 109s was that he could outclimb them very easily. With this in mind, Hamilton starts a steep climb in the hopes of gaining an altitude advantage over the two BF 109s. However, as he begins his climb, Hamilton hears a few loud bangs moments before losing consciousness. The skilled 109 pilots had in fact managed to keep up with him in the climb and shot three rounds into his Spitfire. A 20mm cannon shell had exploded on his back with the other two shells damaging the wing and the fuselage. His Spitfire was now crippled, the control cables had been severed, and his plane was left in a steep climb up. Without any control from Hamilton, the Spitfire stalls out and begins to spin out of control into a steep dive. The German pilots noticed that they had successfully taken out Hamilton's Spitfire and followed the Spitfire down in the dive to make sure that it was going down. However, at just 2,000 feet, right before the 109s take the finishing shot, Hamilton regains consciousness and fires the controls to recover his plane. He did in fact have a radio backpack on, which cushioned the explosion, but he had lost consciousness momentarily, and it was almost too late. Incredibly, Hamilton brings his out-of-control Spitfire to level flight, as he looks around and notices a German fighter still on his tail. Hamilton was a man of courage and determination, and was not ready to give up just yet. Sadly, when he tries to outmaneuver the BF 109s this time, the Spitfire did not respond. It was too badly damaged to turn. There were no other options left. Hamilton knew exactly what was coming for him and prepared for the end. He closed his eyes, waiting for the final shot. Several tense moments go by. John Hamilton slowly opens his eyes. What he saw next was out of this world. The two BF 109s who had just shot him and his plane were now flying beside his crippled Spitfire in formation, one on each side. They were so close that he could see the German pilots staring at him in amazement. They couldn't believe that Nicole's John Hamilton, after being shot down from 36,000 feet, had managed to recover his plane at just 2,000 feet, seconds before crashing into the ground. This was an awe-inspiring moment between three ace pilots, who had an appreciation for each other's skills in the air. The first to destroy each other for their country's victory in the war was no longer there. The two German pilots escorted him for several minutes, back towards his airfield, and moments before peeling off, saluted the British pilot as he saluted back at both of them. Although heavily damaged, Nicole's John Hamilton manages to limp home his Spitfire successfully. John Hamilton later mentions that his experience taught him something about the honour of battle, which he had never forgotten. His record shows that he went on to destroy an Italian fighter the same month, right before becoming a flight commander in the March of 1943. Following this, Hamilton goes on to destroying a Dornier 217, which was shot down into the Sea of Tomoli. Right before the end of his career, he remembered what had happened to him and claimed the Junkers 190 by forcing it to land instead of shooting it down. Hamilton goes on to live a peaceful life housed at South Wales, passing away just recently in 2017 at the age of 100. Before the end, he often confessed that he owed his life to the two German pilots who allowed him to escape after shooting down a Spitfire. I recently looked through my channel analytics and found something rather surprising. Only 1.3% of you guys watching this video are in fact subscribed to the channel. 
Subscribing to the channel is free and it would massively help the channel get towards the 100,000 subscriber goal for this year. Please also remember to turn on the notifications and the bell icon so that I can get these videos out to you much quicker. A huge thanks to the patrons for supporting this channel, allowing me to make these videos. I couldn't do it without you guys. If you would like more amazing stories, please check out my video on the cruelest B-17 ghost fortress that landed itself. Thanks for watching, stay safe.